Now let us move to Section 4, Synthetic Cannabinoids, Management of Intoxication and Withdrawal. There is no specific antidote for synthetic cannabinoid intoxication. Antagonists of the CB1 receptor, which block the acute effects of cannabis, were available in the past, but were taken off the market in 2008 because of psychiatric side effects. Thus, current clinical management is solely supportive and symptomatic. Because of the possibly long duration of action, patients may require hospitalization for observation and monitoring until mental status, physiological parameters, and laboratory tests return to normal. Specific symptoms are treated as clinically indicated, for example, acetaminophen for pain or fever, a short-acting benzodiazepine such as lorazepam for anxiety or agitation, and an antipsychotic for severe or persistent psychosis. Transient suicidal ideation may occur during the acute intoxicated state, but rarely requires antidepressant treatment. Psychiatric symptoms persisting longer than one week warrant close evaluation for a comorbid psychiatric disorder. There are currently no consensus clinical practice guidelines for the treatment of synthetic cannabinoid intoxication, so the clinician must rely on his or her own clinical judgment with specialty consultation as appropriate. Abrupt cessation of chronic or excessive synthetic cannabinoid use often results in a withdrawal syndrome with features similar to, but more intense than, those associated with cessation of plant cannabis use. Typical symptoms include anxiety, depression, insomnia, increased drug craving, increased muscle tone and muscle twitching, chills and sweating, decreased appetite, and headache. These are also the typical signs and symptoms of plant cannabis withdrawal. Withdrawal from plant cannabis has been treated successfully in clinical trials with synthetic THC, known generically as dronabinol, which is legally available in the U.S. as Marinol. This is a Schedule three oral medication which is FDA-approved for the treatment of nausea and vomiting or cachexia associated with cancer chemotherapy. We are not aware of any clinical trials of dronabinol to treat synthetic cannabinoid withdrawal. There are currently no approved pharmacological treatments for synthetic cannabinoid withdrawal and currently no consensus clinical practice guidelines for its treatment. Clinical management involves observation and monitoring until the patient recovers, with supportive and symptomatic measures as indicated, such as intravenous fluids for dehydration, a short-acting benzodiazepine for agitation or anxiety, and acetaminophen for pain or headache. Depression and suicidal ideation usually resolve as withdrawal wanes, unless there is a comorbid mood disorder. Any depressant treatment should be reserved for cases with depression persisting more than several days or known independent comorbid mood disorder. Chronic or excessive synthetic cannabinoid use may result in development of a substance use disorder, analogous to that which develops with chronic use of plant cannabis. About 10% of chronic regular cannabis users develop a cannabis use disorder, but it is not known what proportion of synthetic cannabinoid users develop an analogous synthetic cannabinoid use disorder. The core concept would be continued use of the substance despite the individual knowing that they suffer adverse consequences from such use. There is no such formal diagnosis in DSM-5 or ICD-10, but a diagnosis could be made by generalizing from the criteria provided for cannabis or other substance use disorder. These diagnostic criteria fall into four broad categories. First, impaired control over synthetic cannabinoid use. Second, social impairment due to synthetic cannabinoid use. Third, risky use of synthetic cannabinoids. And finally, pharmacologic dependence on synthetic cannabinoids, as evidenced by tolerance or withdrawal. There are no specific treatment protocols for synthetic cannabinoid use disorder. Treatment is based on general principles of treatment for any substance use disorder. This usually involves cognitive behavioral therapy, either in a group or individual setting, focused on getting the patient to understand the adverse consequences of their substance use and to learn better coping strategies for dealing with drug craving and situations which promote substance use. No medication has been shown in clinical trials to reduce craving for or use of synthetic cannabinoids. To summarize the key points, first, intoxication and withdrawal syndromes often resemble those from plant cannabis but may be more intense and longer lasting. Treatment of intoxication and withdrawal is supportive and symptomatic, as no specific antidotes are available.